I cannot believe that I'm about to do this. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to Dig It With Raven. Today we are doing something that I have sworn off for years, but the universe has pulled me right back into this path of madness, so I've just decided to face it head on. Today we are debunking Joe Rogan and the helicopter hieroglyphs. This week I was scrolling my YouTube homepage, as one does, and this clip from the Joe Rogan experience came across my feed. I normally ignore all this ancient aliens stuff, but for some reason I, cl I clicked it. It was, you know what, the thumbnail got me. That's what everyone wants to say. I wanted to hear what they were going to say about the supposed helicopter hieroglyphs at Abydos. And unsurprisingly, a bunch of claims were made without anyone doing any sort of research or just basic Googling. So here I am to help you all out. First off, hello, Joe. My name is Raven and I am an archeologist. My qualifications are, I have a bachelor in ancient Near Eastern civilizations where I learned to read hieroglyphs right here. I also have two master's degrees that also focused on ancient Egyptian archaeology in some form or another, and I personally translated this tattoo on my arm. So I can read some hieroglyphs. I also wrote this book about lesser known ancient civilizations and cultures, but that's not relevant for today's video. Oh, and you might not have noticed, but I did make a very brief cameo on your podcast episode with Flint Dibble. There I am. So without further ado, let's dig into the clip. Wow. I know. That's what I wanted to go see. But the cool thing was the first temple I went in was what I'd seen on Ancient Aliens, where at the very top of the temple, you have one of the most famous hieroglyphs, which has a spaceship, a helicopter, and a submarine up there. As clear as you can possibly imagine. And Show like, that. What the f*** is that? <laughs> How in the... What is that? <laughs> Explain that, please. Because that looks like a spaceship, that looks like a submarine, and that 100% looks like a helicopter. So weird. The, the Egypt is the weirdest place on earth. It yeah. really is. Because but that's why it needs to be, yeah. what the hell is underneath it? Well, I think that one. That one right there? Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, what are we on. talking about? Come on, that's so crazy. That's a spaceship or a fighter jet. Some kind of a- That's a submarine. It looks like a yacht. It looks like one of them old yachts yeah. that they keep getting but that's, impounded. That's a helicopter. It looks like a helicopter I mean, on, to me. It looks just like a helicopter. Yeah, was the first if place it's ever. not a helicopter, what a goddamn what coincidence. It? Yeah. Okay, so right off the bat, these gentlemen are talking about a segment of hieroglyphs in the Temple of Seti I at Abydos, which is one of the oldest cities of ancient Egypt. Abydos is also extremely important to archaeologists today because it's home to many temples and multiple royal necropoli, such as Umm el Khab, which is a vital source of information for early pharaohs of Egypt, and it also gives us the earliest evidence of writing that we have in ancient Egypt. So it's a literal treasure trove archaeologically for the history of ancient Egypt and the development of the entire civilization. The Temple of Seti I, where these helicopter hieroglyphs are found, also contains an inscription known as the Abydos King List, which provides Egyptologists with the Order of the Old Kingdom Kings and is the sole source that we currently have for the names of many of the kings of the 7th and 8th dynasties. And just so we're all on the same page, Seti I was the second pharaoh of the 19th dynasty during ancient Egypt's New Kingdom. He ruled from around 1294 or 1290 BCE all the way until 1279 BCE. Seti I essentially restored the Egyptian empire after it had been greatly diminished during the reign of Akhenaten, who was the pharaoh who converted the state to monotheism, and he was also the father of King Tutankhamun. Seti I, on the other hand, was the father of Ramses II, otherwise known as Ramses the Great. But let's get back to the Temple of Seti I, which is also known today as the Great Temple of Abydos. Construction on the temple was started in the 13th century BCE by Seti I, but it wasn't completed by the time he died. So it was finished and also renovated by his son, Ramses II. We have evidence that Ramses II changed its original design and placed new inscriptions within the temple. Which brings me to the oh-so-famous hieroglyphs at hand. Let's look at them a little bit more closely, shall we? From top to bottom, it's been noted that this looks like a helicopter, 
This could be a submarine or a tank or sometimes a yacht. Uh, this one supposedly is a spaceship or also, also a submarine, depending on which interpretation you look at. And the one at the bottom is a glider. Needless to say, people have looked at this collection of symbols and concocted theories of alien contact or advanced technology that is now lost to time. Or my favorite is being covered up by modern archaeologists, because we certainly get paid enough to cover things up. If only. And sure, you know, when I was a kid and this sort of stuff would come up on the History Channel, I ate it up. Mostly because it was one of the only sources of ancient Egyptian history content that I had at the time, but also because, yeah, it's pretty fantastical. But when you actually start studying this sort of stuff, you quickly move on from the fantastical to the much more reasonable conclusions that are based on fact. So I'm sorry to say to everyone watching that, no, these hieroglyphs are not evidence of advanced ancient technology or aliens. They are in fact an early case of whiteout, otherwise known as a palimpsest when it's referring to a similar act in a manuscript where the text has been scraped or washed off in preparation for new text to be written over top. This relief isn't one original set of carvings. It's actually two overlapping inscriptions of the official kingly titles of Ramses II and Seti I. When Ramses II was renovating the temple of Seti I, he had someone cover up Seti I's royal titulary and replace it with his own. This is actually very common in ancient Egypt for people taking credit for things that other people might have done, or even trying to erase people from history. But then, over time, as some of the plaster eroded and fell away, it created a weird combo of signs that now look like these modern vehicles. So yes, Mr. Rogan, it is a goddamn coincidence. Let's look at what each carving would have said when it was fresh. The initial inscription made during the reign of Seti I would look like this and translate to powerful scimitar who suppresses the nine bows, which is their way of saying the enemies of Egypt, Men Ma'atra, which is the throne name of Seti I. Next, Ramses II, son of Seti I, filled that in and recarved it with his two ladies' name, protector of Egypt, who repels foreign lands. Usur Ma'atra Seta Penre, which is the throne name for Ramses II. Ancient Egyptian rulers had five official royal names in their title, so one can see why you would need to reuse the space, because it would take up a lot of room. <laughs> this segment that we just read out are the two ladies' names for each of the pharaohs, respectively. The two ladies are the goddesses Wajet and Nekbet, who were the protectors of unified Egypt and were responsible for establishing the laws, protecting rulers and the Egyptian countryside, and promoting peace. Peace. You can see them together on the crowns of ancient Egypt, and the two ladies, or Nebti name, is one of the oldest royal titles in ancient Egyptian history. So there you have it. No mass conspiracy, just damaged walls and age. Just look at the state of the ceiling right above it. It's absolutely no wonder that the plaster fell off with all of that crumbling stone. If you still don't believe me, all you have to do is just shift your gaze a little to the left to see the cartouche, which has very obvious signs of carved glyphs over top of one another. Also, very quickly, while I have you all here, Joe and Aaron talked about the supposed wooden plane that was found, quote, in one of the chambers. You know, there's a bunch of weird stuff there, a bunch of weird images. Just And how about that one plane that they found that was inside? They found like a wooden plane yep. that was inside one of the chambers? Not totally normal. Yeah. We just buried there with the... Yeah. I'm not sure which chambers you are speaking of, but I believe that you, Joe, are talking about the Saqqara bird. This lovely little bird, modeled after a falcon, is made out of sycamore wood and was mounted onto a stick. It was discovered in 1898 during excavations at Saqqara in the tomb of Padi Iman and dates to around 200 BCE. We don't know what the Saqqara bird's official purpose was. It could have been a ceremonial object because falcons were representations for particular ancient Egyptian deities like Horus, but it could have also been a toy or even a masthead on a sacred boat for a religious festival. 
some people have seen this bird and suggested that the ancient Egyptians had knowledge of aerodynamics, which would place the scientific development of these principles centuries earlier in the historical timeline. This is yet another object that people use to claim that ancient Egypt developed the first aircraft. Sorry to burst your bubble yet again, but there is no evidence of this, and this little guy isn't even capable of flight. It's just too heavy and unstable. Researchers at the Institute of Aerospace Technology Bremen conducted a computational fluid dynamics simulation based on a 3D scan of the bird back in 2023. And the results showed that the bird demonstrates, quote, no ancient knowledge of aerodynamics. Its glide properties aren't sufficient, the center of mass is off, and the lift distribution across the wings means it would just roll uncontrollably. Though I do have to admit that yes, looking at the Saqqara bird from above, it very much does look like a plane. But in my opinion, so would many other basic carvings of birds. So there you have it, answers to not one, but two of ancient Egypt's supposed greatest mysteries. Maybe these simple explanations aren't as exciting as the potential for alien contact or advanced technology, but might I point you in the direction of Occam's razor? Thanks so much for watching everyone. If you liked that video, you know what to do. Smash the like, smash the subscribe. Um, should I do more of these reaction debunking videos? Let me know in the comments. Big thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. If you like the channel, you wanna help support the channel, head on over to Patreon and become a patron. Stay dirty, my friends.